Hello and welcome to this video where I want to explain to you how I made this 3D model of a milestone in Kilkenny using an app that is called Kiri Engine. I'm not getting paid by them or anything to do this video. It's just an app that I discovered a couple of weeks ago and I'm very happy with it and I think it's pretty cool to do. Not just to have something to do, but also because you can link the models on an open street map. And I think it's not just a great solution for mappers who are interested in recording heritage, but also for archaeologists on site or people surveying archaeological sites. If you see an interesting stone in the wall, for example, and you can't take the wall with you, obviously, and one or two pictures won't tell you enough to actually figure out what it is. But if you can take a 3D model home that you can zoom in on and turn around and whatever, that is very useful to have. And I've tried to explain why that is useful in the last video. And I will just say it again. It makes the map a lot more useful to have connections to Wikidata and Wikimedia and these kinds of open data sources, but also to, to certain websites. Like if you think of a hotel, you would want the uh, website linked to that, for example. But if you have things like, and these are all very Irish examples, Sheila gigs, Ohm stones, high crosses and such like, which you can also find in other countries, but it's very Irish. And it's just useful to have all the information in one place, even if you have to click on a link to get to the next step. So this is a milestone in on Magdalen Street in Kilkenny, and I used this app called Kiri to create this model, and it took me like actively probably took me maybe 15 to 20 minutes. There's a lot of waiting time involved because it is a lot of data and it takes a while to render and to process. But that's not an active part of, you know, of the process that you just have to wait for your phone and the cloud to do their thing. But um, it took me probably five minutes to take the pictures for this and then another couple of minutes to download stuff and to extract data and, you know, you will see in the video. So let's dive right in. When you open the app, you click on the plus at the bottom and then with the free version, you have to click on take photos. You don't have any other options, but it's fine. The free version is fine. And then you start taking pictures, walking around the object or if it's small on your table or something. Just move the camera around the object taking pictures and the photographs have to overlap. That is very important because they are stitched together by their overlaps. That's how the program knows. It recognizes certain bits on the object and stitches them together like that. So you just walk around the whole thing, take as many pictures as you can. With the free version, the maximum is 70 pictures. It is not going to be the best solution for high crosses, large objects, like that very complex things, but it's fine for smaller objects like this milestone. I didn't even use 70 pictures. That's also partly because I couldn't go around the backside and couldn't photograph that bit of it. But I have also done actual 3D, well, almost, um, gravestones that you, you can't go underground and photograph it from below, but there's no information there, hopefully. That that will be important for you anyway. And you can go very close if there are certain features that you want to close up. You can tilt your phone around if it's easier to reach certain corners of the object. And make sure when you take the pictures that they're sharp because I made that mistake, I, I wasn't patient enough and I just clicked and took the picture and it was blurry and then it was also blurry, that bit was blurry in the 3D model. And when you think you have taken enough pictures, you click on the arrow to the right, give the model a name. There's a limited number of letters you can use, characters. And then you click on Upload. And it's very important there that you do not turn off the phone. I mean, not turn off the phone, but turn off the screen or go into another app because it will stop uploading. Well, it, it will pause, actually. 
um, if you, let's say you get a message and you read the message, it will continue the upload from where you stopped. But it will take, you know, this is the most annoying part is all this waiting. What you can actually see in the end, the screen recording took four minutes and nine seconds. So that's taking all the photographs and uploading the whole thing. So that was under five minutes. Then there's another waiting period. First it's queuing, then it's editing, and then it is processing, I think in that order. But you don't have to do anything. You can turn off the app while it's doing that because it's doing that on the cloud, in the Kiri cloud, wherever that is. And you can do whatever you were planning to do that day and wait to take maybe, well, it, it depends a bit on how frequent the app is, I suppose. It can be 15 minutes, it can be two hours. So that takes a bit of time. Uh, for the free version, if you have the paid version, the queuing time is shorter. When it is finished processing, you will get a notification from the app. There's a little square symbol and you can open your app again and click on the model and admire what you have done and hopefully everything went okay. And you can see it has already cut out a lot of the background that you won't need. So that's where the AI comes into play, I think. But you might still want to crop the model a bit because there's a lot of wall that you don't really need for context and also it'll make the file unnecessarily large. And that's important later on when you want to upload it to a Sketchfab. If you're not planning to upload on Sketchfab and you just want a model for your own use on your phone or to share it with your friends. They have to have the Kiri app though. If you want to send it to friends who have a Kiri app, they can watch it on their phone as well. Click on the crop symbol on the top right to open the cropping mode. And that will open the model within a bounding box and it's usually all over the place. So you have to adjust that first. And there are three axes, X, Y, and Z, or blue, red, and green. And you use the rotate thing to move your model around and make it sit straight in the bounding box first. And you have to turn it around to activate the other axes and just play around. It might take a little bit of getting used to, but it's quite clever though. And once you're happy with the adjustment within the bounding box, you can start the actual cropping. And you see how the right hand side of the box is highlighted in this turquoise color. You can move that in or out with the move boundary thing at the bottom of the menu. And you can only activate the ones that are in the front of the box. So they're not, it's not a glass box that you can go through or something. So you have to turn the model again around to get to all the six walls of the bounding box, so to speak, and then you can move it around. And when you're finished with one wall, you go on to the next one. And it's important also that you bear in mind that your model, the most important bit of your model, like in this case, the milestone is within the boundaries. Sometimes when you rotate it, it might end up being the tip or parts of it outside the bounding box. Then you have to move the walls of the bounding box to the outside to make sure it's within the bounding box. A lesson I had to learn the hard way. When you're finished, when you're happy, you click on done and then that exits the crop mode and, and gives you a preview of what it will look like. And when you're happy with this, you click on save edit and generate a new model. So you don't lose the old model in case you did something wrong in the cropping process. And then it starts the whole editing and processing process all over again. So you'll have to be patient again. When the processing is finished, you get another notification and you can go into your app and open your model again. And if you want to share it now with your friends, you can click on the three dots 
and it opens the share menu. If you want to upload the model to Sketchfab, you have to export. So you click on the export button. And as a free user, you get a free export coupon once a week. Or if you invite people to use the app, you get one and there are different ways of getting one, but once a week you get a free one. And you put in your email address and it sends the model to your email address or a link actually. And then you can download it from there. You'll get an email into your email inbox and I don't have to show you how that works because you've all used email before. You open the email and it will have a link in it that you have to click to download the model. And then you come to this site here. It's the curieengine.app website and it says very big download model and you click on that to download. And that might take a while because it might be a big file. It will end up in your downloads folder as a zip file. So you have to unzip them first. And to do that, and I'm talking about Windows, whatever I have now, 11 or something. Um, it's right click. That's the way I do it. There are other ways to do it. And it says extract all. And it'll show you which folder you want to extract it into. And I have a folder just for 3D models in my documents folder or somewhere. And I will create a new folder for this one as well. So new folder, this is the milestone mod mod Lynn Street. And select folder. And that will extract these files into that folder. And if this is ticked, it will also open that folder straight away. This is it unpacked now. You see here, um, the this is the file, the most important file. This has the actual 3D model in it, so to speak. Um, and you see here, it's a type 3D object. So the file ending is OBJ. And the, the size here is 483 megabytes. So that is quite large. And then you have an MTL file. This is the texture file. And then you have a JPEG file. I'll open that to show you. That has kind of, that looks, you know, a bit like art or something, or very messy, depending on your perspective. That has the, it's some sort of image file that has all those textures in it. Um, and the 3D model will get these and make them into a model with a texture. Um, you can also just use the 3D model and then it won't have a texture. Um, it'll just be a plain gray or something. And then you want to pack them again into a zip file, but only these three, because you only need these three on Sketchfab. So you highlight them again and click on compress to zip file, right click and then this one, or I never use the um, top menu, so I'm not entirely sure where that is up here. Three dots, yeah. So the three dots and then compress to zip file. And that might take a little while. If the file is small enough, this one here, the object file, you could upload it to Sketchfab as is and that'll just create a gray model. Um, but the li limit on Sketchfab is 100 megabytes and you see here this is already 400 and 83 megabytes and I see that my zip file is also too large. Um, I might have to go in and maybe crop the file in the Kiri app and cut the, the drain pipe out because it's not really that important and see if that's smaller than 100 megabytes then because that's the limit you can upload on Sketchfab unfortunately. But it's all free, so you know, if for something that you get for free, you can't really complain too much because there are ways around it. So I will do that. I'll try to compress it a little more and see if that helps at all. We have it downloaded and we un have unzipped it into its own folder. And what I thought would be clever was to rename the files into also Milestone Model in Street, but it turns out that then when you upload it to Sketchfab, it'll lose a kind of it'll lose the connection between the, the object file and the MTL file and the JPEG file, and it won't have the texture. 
Don't ask me why that is. I'm not an expert for 3D models. It's just something I noticed, so don't rename them. And then you can rename that one, which probably makes more sense. And I'll call it Milestone Modeling Street. And at some point I will learn how to spell that. Then we can upload that to Sketchfab. You can also just look at this model in your on your computer. Um, if you have, there's a Windows 3D viewer integrated that just comes standard um, with your Windows. You just double click on the object file and it'll open that. It'll take a while because you know it's 400 something megabytes. It'll it's a large file, so it will take a while. But maybe you want to do that before you upload. Anyway, we'll go to sketchfab.com. You will need an account there. Um, you can scroll through and see what it all can, you know. Um, share and embed 3D models anywhere online, so that's what we want to do, yes. So you log in, you can sign up and get your own, like a proper Sketchfab account. Um, you can also start a business. Um, or you can just log in with your Facebook account, Google account, Twitter, Epic Games, and your Apple account. I'll use my Google account. I think I used to have an account, but I can't find this, the password anymore. So I'm using my Gmail account. And then when you log in for the first time, they might ask you to confirm your email, personalize your profile, all kinds of stuff, follow other creators. So if you want to, you can follow me and then you want to upload the model. So you go to the top right, click on upload and either browse and go to your folder or just drag and drop it from your Windows Explorer. So that's the zip file, we'll get there. So I'll pull that in. Why is it saying file two of two? No. Okay. For some reason it says file two of two. So it's inspecting the model to see if there are any problems with it, uh, but it, there isn't a problem. So we can continue to actually upload the files. And here you can give it a title. It'll take that from the file name, the zip file name. You can also add a description. And very important, what I would ask you to do is if you are uploading something that of a monument or an architectural fragment that is on the sites and monument record, please, please, please add the sites and monuments record number because that will help people find the model. I couldn't have found any of the Sheila Nagigs easily without the sites and monuments records number in the description or even sometimes people have put it in the title. So I will check that on the historic environment viewer. So it's uh, it starts with heritagedata.maps.arches.com but there's a whole lot more in the address. Um, if I don't forget, I'll link it in the video description. And you zoom in to where you did your photogrammetry. Uh, so this is Maudlin Street in Kilkenny, one of the oldest streets in Kilkenny. It was actually the old Dublin road before they built the Dublin road. And it's at this corner here, so it doesn't seem to have a record on the sites and monuments records, which is a pity, but we can't change that now. If, let's say it was, um, so you would click on the red dot, um, in very rare cases it might be a blue dot, but in most cases it will be a red dot. You click on it and you take this number here, the sequence, it starts with KK because this is in Kilkenny. It will start with different letters if it's in a different county. And then the number, which has some system behind it to do with ordnance survey maps. Um, and please include the hyphens in the end. There might be up to three or four hyphens in the end, but include them because people might be looking for the whole thing. And copy that and paste that into the description. I can't do that now, obviously, because this isn't for the milestone. It's some grave slab that must be in Maudlin's Tower. So I'll go back into my description and just type a description.
What I will also do is add that I created it with Kiri Engine and how many photographs it took me to get it. You will find that in the app if you click on the three dots next to your model. It opens a menu and there is a little thing for file information. There's a little eye. You click on that and it shows you an image and says, in this case, 52 images. Um, that's just for other people to know, okay, it, it took that many images um, to create this model. And then you can add categories. I will choose culture, heritage and history and architecture maybe. And I think you can only choose two categories and then you can add tags. And while you're doing this, I don't know if you noticed this, the discoverability has gone up significantly as the more words that people might look for, the discoverability increases. So I'll add Kiri Engine and Kilkenny Marble. I used that before um, because the milestone is made of Kilkenny Marble. I also use Kilkenny as a tag and also my whoops, milestone. And you see, because it comes up, some other people must have uploaded milestones. And see now that this coverability is 100%. So that's great. I will save this now, just in case something goes wrong. So I have it saved. And continue on to the left here. We have a preview window that I could click on and that would show the model in a small window, in this small window. But we can also edit the 3D settings. I'll go to that by clicking on Edit 3D Settings. This will load the model, which will take a little while because it's a lot of data. Oh, it was a bit shocked there for a moment. It looked terrible. But this looks fine. Um, there is a little glitch here. Hopefully you can see that that it has pushed this bit inwards a little bit. It doesn't actually look like that in real life. I want to, you know, if you are able to do this with your mouse, um, fair play to you because it's it's not easy to get it straight. But you can set the default orientation or rotation um, here on the left hand side. Straighten model. I can't work with these things here. I, don't, I can't do that. I don't know how to do it. So I will use the show advanced rotation because that works exactly like in the app and I can do that. So it shows you these three axes and you just turn it around until you think you have it the way you want it to. Just a little bit tilted along the red axis. Uh, seems to be a bit more precise than in the app. Um, yeah, that looks fine, but it really came out really well. I think you'll agree, the 57 at least. And you can see, you know, the, the little shells here and the Kilkenny marble. That is fairly good. You know, for 52 images, that's good. I'll save these settings. And you can also change the render, the PBR. I don't know what that stands for, but that has the textures. If you change it to matte cap, it'll just have it like this, looks a bit metallic. I did that with some of the um, Suervent manufacturer marks, mar maker's marks. I only played around with the top menu here. You can show a wireframe. We don't really want that. There are probably applications where that is useful. You can have a transparent background or just a gray background. There's probably a way to also choose a background. We'll get there. And then the top menu here. So these are the, this is the scene apparently. And then we have lighting. 
and this can be you know can make quite a difference and it's different for every model I would think so down here we have for example we have the environment so there are different um, backgrounds kind of but they're like light backgrounds and I'll just show you the difference so this is industrial room so it'll have lots of lights at the top and it has a, like a concrete floor or something so the light will be kind of white and cool and then this is this is more like a, an artificial light so this is terrible for our cases um it it might be good for for some environments so we have a royal esplanade and you can actually create these backgrounds somehow um so this would work like the pavement is quite bright and the top is quite bright and let's say we're on treasure island that will make it much warmer because it has more sunshine so, you know that would be f very fake uh, ireland or uh, then we have a Trinitatis church which is you know indoors so the light will not be as warm it's more of an indoor light and then we have uh, some wood it's again a bit warmer so you can play around with that as I said it's it's different for every model Um, I might just go with the first setting I haven't actually gone through all of them. Maybe Gdansk, Gdansk uh, shipyard buildings. I'll go with that, I think. Because it's outdoors. And I don't know how similar the climate is in Gdansk than to Ireland. You can also change the orientation. I can't go through all of this because I actually don't know all of these things. I've only tried it out with one model before, but you can change the brightness, the light intensity, the shadow bias, and that's all the lighting done. You might want to save that then before you move on to materials. So there's metalness, which is a weird word, but you can... Um, so the metalness is at zero because it's a stone. But if I moved it up, it would look more like metal, apparently. Um, it's just smoother, I guess. So it's all a lot of things that you have to try out for yourself, really. Um, so it's the glossiness, for example, is at zero as well. I can't see much of a difference if I zoom, um, change it to one. There's a lot, a lot to change around. Um, I don't know how to use this. Annotations. I haven't tried that before. And animation. Did I use that before? No. Yeah, so this is really basic because I'm not an expert. I've only tried this for a couple of days. And I'm sure there are people out there who have made videos about how to use this properly. But I'm fairly happy with this. So I'm going to go save settings and exit this, this is only exits the editing mode and we're finished on the right hand, on the left hand side and on the right hand side you can determine who can see your model you might want to make it public so anyone on Sketchfab can find it which is what I want because I'm all about open access Time Team for example, they upload models to Sketchfab of their finds but only their patrons can see them. So they are probably using anyone with the link. And you can only do that if you have the pro version of Sketchfab, which I don't have because, you know, I'm only doing this for fun, I'm not making any money off it. And, but I, that's what, how that works. They send you a link and you have to log in with your patron account again, and then you can access the model. And they're, you know, very interesting models. And they don't just have the fines, but they also get... 3D models of their trenches now, so they you can use it with a drone, so they fly a drone and they definitely take more than 52 images. So they fly a drone over the trench, which is really high-tech stuff and really fun, and they upload those to Sketchfab, and if you're a patron member of Time Team, 
you can access those. And then you can allow or not allow comments. I'm okay with comments, I think. And then um, allow texture inspection, which I'm also okay with because I don't really know what that means. And it's not age-restricted content. So I'll leave that on off. It's not a sheet and a gig, not, not, you know, it's just art, it's fine. And then you can decide if you want people to download, to be able to download your models. And if you let them download it, you get credits for your uploads. So I always set mine to free download. You could also set up a store, but you probably need the pro version as well. Um, if you wanted to people to buy the models of you, which doesn't make sense uh, in this case, unless I was a terrible capitalist, which I'm not at all. But if you were making models for computer games or something, like if, if this was a freestanding milestone that, that I thought would be interesting for people to use in a computer game, which I could have just designed from the scratch in Blender or some 3D modeling software, and uh, I wanted people to buy those models of me, or I don't know, like car models or train engines or something, um, then you could sell these models as well. But I don't want that. I want people to be able to download it. And you can also change the copyright attribution license. I'm going with, um, this is, I think it's CC4 or two, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going with this. I want people to attribute my work, which they probably won't do anyway, but I'm, you know, I'm trying. So this is what I'm using. I think it's maybe it's CC20. Anyway, I'll just select this. And that's all the settings done. So I can save and publish this now. That was very quick. And if you can share that on all these platforms here. And then if you want to see it, what it looks like for other people, you click on that. And you can still go into Edit Properties and Edit 3D Settings. There we are. The first glance, it'll be a bit blurred and you might panic for a little bit and think, um, well, it was so neat and detailed. But it is still. But you see now that it opens it up, it automatically opens it in this orientation that we set up earlier. So that's nice, it's not all like screwed like this. And then we have the information down here and some more model information and so on. Shin and Will, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and, much more important, inspiring. And if you have any interesting Sketchfab models that you've created yourself, please put them in the comment section and I'll look forward to checking them out. Slanga fool!